Today is Thursday, March the 12th, 2020, and, and we're in the second part of the resurrection lifestyle being demonstrated in our life. And last, last week we talked about it being demonstrated by our steadfastness after the uh, things of God that the inner man would have. So this week we're talking about how we demonstrate in community. So let's read Acts 2, 42 through 47. It says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. <clears throat> now before Jesus left the earth for a seat at the right hand of the Father in the throne room, he instructed his followers to participate in the Christian Passover as we know it as the Holy Eucharist, the uh, Lord's Supper, or Holy Communion. He said to do this in remembrance of me. And when the resurrection lifestyle was being practiced in the early church, communion, Holy Communion, became a part of it. Now, I know some would say, well, they, they were breaking bread from house to house, doesn't refer to, the, to communion. And they may be right. <clears throat> now, I'm not being dogmatic about this, but I, I do think there's a really important point here that communion became a very important part of the early church because they had their their roots in Judaism and the celebration of the Passover. And many scholars will agree that the term breaking of bread is a, ref a reference, excuse me, to the Lord's Supper. Some would disagree. And I want you to note particularly verse 46 where it says and appears clearly that with the breaking of bread, there was a full meal. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. So, it was. It seemed like it was traditional in the early church that they had a regular meal, a full meal, a full spread, if you please, not by itself, but in conjunction with doing communion. So communion wasn't just a separate exercise of the church somewhere or in the house-to-house -house experience. There was a full meal, and they celebrated communion with it. Now, why is communion so important to the identification of resurrection power in the community of believers? And I want to I want to teach about this just briefly today because I think it's so important for us individually, because it's a constant confirmation of Christ's fulfilling of the purpose for which He came to the earth. It's very interesting for us to understand this. He came to offer Himself a ransom for many. He came to lay down His life. Every time the church celebrates the Lord's Supper, a number of things happen. And I want to list a, a few of those. First of all, we attest to Christ's triumph over sin. See, the Bible teaches that the wages of sin is death. So that sin, when it's, when it's brought to its full life, it produces death, which means separation from God. Christ broke death's power by resurrecting from the dead. So every time we celebrate communion, we're celebrating his dominion over sin and therefore death. When we celebrate communion, we acknowledge Christ dying on our behalf individually. He died because of my sin. And I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I acknowledge Christ died for my sin. A third thing is we declare in the spiritual realm the reality of Christ's lordship. <laughs> Not only did he tell us everything, all power and all authority in heaven and earth is given unto me, he has been given a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we, we declare in the spiritual realm, every time we take communion, we break the bread symbolic of his body and, and we drink of the cup symbolic of his shed blood, we declare in the spiritual realm the reality of his lordship. Fourthly, we remember that his kingdom is a reign of self-denial for every believer. It is a giving up of our life, not a claiming to keep our life. I need to say that again. 
we remember that his kingdom is a reign of self-denial for every follower. It is a giving up of our life, not a claim to keep our life. And finally, it's a reminder that he is not dead, but alive. Therefore, his word is true. What a strength to our faith and encouragement to our soul. He said, do you believe this? Do you believe I'm the resurrection and the life? And he that believes in me shall never die. Martha, do you believe this? Mary, do you believe it? Less, do you believe it? And it's a reminder to us every time we take communion, every time we break bread, (laughs) that he is alive and his word is true. The Lord's Supper, Holy Communion is is important for other reasons as well, well, but here's the thing. It cements us together in unity. We gather around the Lord's Supper, the table of the Lord, in a common bond. We have our focus on Jesus. So I want to ask you, have you regularly been participating in the Lord's Supper? And let me suggest this, because the church doesn't own, and no denomination, no individual church owns the Lord's Supper or communion. In fact, I, I have suggested in the past, and I would suggest it to you today, dads, you need to have communion in your home. You need to sit down with your family and break the Lord's Supper together because it's a focus uh, on Jesus Christ and the common ground of our faith. And what a way to root your own children and ground your own children in our faith and the apostles' doctrine and in community than by sharing communion in your own house. And maybe the next time your small group gets together, if you're part of a small group or a small community, hallelujah, come on that you break bread or you have communion together. In communion, we lose focus on ourselves and we gain focus on Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, you are the main focus of our life. We love you. We praise you. We give you the glory today. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for demonstrating to us this is how we live. If anyone wants to follow you, he must deny his or herself, take up their cross daily and follow you. So we we die to ourselves again today and we live to the power, resurrection power of the Holy Spirit demonstrated in community by the grace of God. Amen. Well, have a blessed day. You are blessed as you walk in fellowship with one another and with Christ.